What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ethereal's new website. They put out quite a bit of new information, they answered some old questions, that brought up some new questions as well. There's a lot of great stuff on here, the website is designed really well, I had a few, I countered a few small bugs, I've already reported them to Undying Games, and some of the info, a lot of it I really like, some of it, uh, not so much. As you come in, you got Atropos, you're introduced to Atropos, he's the main neutral objective on ethereal kind of like the boss he's kind of like the orb prime for paragon or whatever the fuck they call it in smite league of legends don't know don't really care to know and he's a three phase boss encounter which is unique as ethereal is always very unique and he goes from we to not so we to freaking huge and he looks really cool i think he looks a lot like the vampires from priest if you've ever seen that movie which i highly doubt but what i really think he looks like if you've ever played the game Bloody Roar, the fighting game, the Bat Girl, whenever she transforms into her beast form, that's kind of what he looks like. So as you fight through, he starts off, he's not much larger than the average myth. In fact, I think Grognark is probably larger than him. He's just a dude sitting there with one sword and you start fighting him. But once you take off enough HP, he transforms into a second phase where he gets much bigger, grows some wings, and uh, pulls another sword out of his ass, I guess. And... Then if you fight him out of that phase, you transform into the third phase where he gets freaking huge. As you can see here, this is Grognark, the largest myth in Ethereal's lineup. And compared to Grognark, he is just massive. He loses the swords, of course, because they would be tiny in his giant hands. And he destroys the arena around him. And then also in this phase, he has targets that light up across his body. I don't know if there's a, a specific sequence or if it's just random. But as these targets light up, you can hit him with some basic attacks or with an ability and it will shatter the target which does significant damage to atropos and uh but it also sends him into a frenzy which he deals extra damage to your team now whenever you do kill him you do get a buff you get a physical and magical damage buff as well as a significant amount of gold there are some questions that we had one of them do you get rewarded for pushing a phase? Like, do you get like a little bit of gold if you push him from phase one to phase two? I highly doubt that. That doesn't really make sense to me. The big question, the biggest question I had, if you put, push him into like phase three and you decide you just don't have what it takes to take him down and you just peace out or you wipe and he kills everybody on your team, does he stay in phase three or does he like start regening health? And as he regens health, does he you know, go back into his second evolution and then first evolution? Or do you, you know, if you, can you fight him from his first evolution to his second evolution and then just leave him be and come back later? I have no idea. That's hopefully will get answered in the future. Moving on here, we have the multimedia tab. Multimedia tab, it's just, it's just artwork. That's all it is. Um, I don't really mean to shit on the artwork. It's really cool artwork. It's just not new information or anything so you can scroll through here and take a look at some oh wow i've never seen this never seen this picture of zero that is really cool that's a nice little pose that they've got him in there so you could take a look around through that if you want to let's get to the meat and potatoes here with the myths so on the myth tab they have all the myths and they it's a cool little setup here they've got their name and a little portrait of the myth and you get a second pose whenever you hover over them you got Talos, Noxus, Dante. You can take a look at all the myths here in the myth tab. Let's go down to Malware. He's a fan favorite. So we click on Malware and it opens a big information sheet about Malware. You've got the realm that he's from. More importantly, you have that he's a ranged physical myth. And then you have his class, which is Marksman. And then as you can see, as you hover over the class in the realm, those are... Uh, selectable. So let's uh, click on the Realm Ovagon. And we can see that Malware comes from the same place as Nikolai and Dr. Grace. So we go back here and we'll, let's go ahead and click on his class, Marksman. And Marksman are the ADCs of the game. So it explains that here in the Marksman tab. And you can also scroll down and see that everybody that's a Marksman in Ethereal, which is Dante and malware right now so back on the malware page here if you scroll down a little more you see all of his lore and you can read through this a lot of lore heads will be devouring a lot of this information for everybody else it'll probably be just something fun to read while you're taking a shit which is nice 
And then you scroll down a little more, and you got his official art, if that's something you're interested in. And then finally, you have the myth voice lines. This isn't for every single myth. Not all the myths have their voice lines released. But Malware does. We've heard him before on the show. So, very cool voice lines. Tricolor did a really great job with Malware. Let's go ahead and close that down. If we come down here, you see all the myths. So you don't have to go back to the myth tab. You can just scroll down here. This is what I was talking about, though. One of the small bugs with the website. You can't actually scroll. You can only just move them one position. It looks like you should be able to scroll all of them, but you can't. So that kind of that kind of sucks. But like I said, I've already I've already told Ethereal about this. So now that we've looked at the myths, I think probably the most interesting information that has come from the website are the classes. Interesting gameplay-wise. Lore-wise, there's all kinds of interesting stuff. But gameplay-wise, you have all the classes, and it's been said that every class will have a passive. They've kind of changed that. It's going to be a class ability because it's a little more active than, than, than all that. Not everything's passive. So we didn't know what the Archmage class ability was, so let's click on the Archmage. And as we, as we look at the Archmage here, we can scroll down and see what Archmages are in Ethereal. We've got Noxus, Chief Akaika, and Kalia. That's that's a cute pose for Kalia. I don't think I've seen that before. And then you've got the other classes, and you can take a look at those if you want. But let's pop back up here and look at the class ability for the Archmage. Archmages can place teleportation sigils around the map. I don't know how these are going to work exactly. I don't know what the range is or how many sigils you can put down. I don't know if you could put one down in lane and then go back to your elder chamber and buy your items and then zip back, you know, right back to lane with the teleportation sigil. I also don't know how many people can take it. I don't know if it's just the Archmage. I hope so. I hope it's just the Archmage. I would, I think it would be very overpowered if the entire team could take these teleportation sigils because it's something that's just always there. Probably, I would think. I don't know the exact mechanics yet. Like I said, they answered a lot of questions, but it even it brought up even more questions. So let's move on through the other passives here. The Sky Slayers, of course, we know can fly. So the class ability is flight. And it says Sky Slayers can channel energy to take flight. This enables them to move freely through the air. And Sky Slayers are kind of like a sky jungler. There's going to be a sky jungle, which people call the Skungle. We have Leah and Zero so far for the Sky Slayers. Now, the interesting thing I found here was this right here. They channel energy to take flight. I don't know about you, but every game I've ever played where you have to channel an ability, you can't do anything else while you're channeling. So I think what this means, this isn't anything confirmed by Undying Games. This is just my hypothesis, is that you cannot auto attack or do other abilities while you're flying. All you can do while you're flying is fly because you have to channel that energy in order to fly so that's a good way to balance it a lot of people were worried that the sky slayers would be able to just death from above take down a melee hero while that melee hero can really do nothing about it i think uh this would solve that problem however like i said that has not been confirmed and then we have the overseers down here the overseers they still haven't released any information about them they're not going to be in the alpha this is their mystery eighth class that they are extremely secretive about they won't tell me anything about the overseers i even asked has anybody guessed right as far as what the overseers do and they they're like we can't confirm <laughs> like they won't even tell me that much so still nothing on the overseers now we got the reaper class down here reapers are the assassins of ethereal their class ability is parkour we already kind of knew about this class ability but it allows the reaper class to climb over trees rocks boulders for a sneak attack the parkour ability has a stamina bar applied to it the Reapers are Exil and Malaya, the brother-sister deadly duo. Now, this one right here, it's pretty self-explanatory how useful this would be for an assassin type. Um, a lot like Reaper in Overwatch, you could just gain a vantage point for a little bit. Uh, it does have a stamina bar applied to it, so you can't just stick to a tree forever. But you can gain a vantage point to find the best place to drop down on somebody and attack them. Or just scale a rock and head straight in the lane and gank somebody before they even know you're there pretty cool stuff for the reapers we already did the sky slayers where i did the archmage we got the berserkers here another one that we kind of knew what their class ability was the berserkers are sort of the ground junglers of ethereal the melee heavy bruiser types 
And the class ability is Destructible Terrain, when we have Aron and Grognark. So Berserkers can destroy trees or rocks to create bridges or block a road. Utilizing this ability will apply a cooldown. This is interesting right here, create bridges or block a road. I don't know if they'll be able to like knock down a tree to access the sky jungle so that you don't have to fly to get to some of these sky jungle minions. That would be kind of cool. Um, again, this is just me thinking out loud. This isn't hasn't been confirmed by Undying Games. And then the block of road, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're going to do a gank on mid lane and you can drop a tree that prevents the mid laner from heading back to their tower like a coward, it's going to be invaluable. They're not, they're going to have to take a circuitous, circuitous, a circular route. They're going to have to circle around to get back to their tower and they're not going to be able to do that. And you're going to be able to just tee off on them with your mid laner or, you know, whatever lane you gank. Now we've got the clerics here. The clerics being the supports of uh, Ethereal. We've got Grace, Nikolai, and Marina. Now, the class ability is called Ethereum Path. Clerics can pledge their devotion to a different Ethereum. Each tome grants a different bonus. So if you read into the lore, there are six different Ethereans, so there's going to be six different Ethereum paths. It has been confirmed that you cannot switch paths in the middle of game. Once you pick a path, you're on that path. You can't you you get those those bonuses and you can't switch those bonuses mid game. I think this is really cool. It offers some counter build potential. If you're going against a certain comp, maybe a certain path is better against that comp than others. Uh, really cool stuff. I like I like options in any game and meaningful decisions. And this will provide a meaningful decision point at the very beginning of the game. Let's go down here. Who else we got? The knights. We haven't talked about the knights yet. So the knights are kind of the tanks of Ethereal, the defensive-minded ones. Uh, we've got Asheron and Talos. And their class ability is Relic Hunt, a little bit like Ethereum Path. Um, knights will select one relic to pursue throughout the game. Completing different goals will unlock various passive and active effects. So it's like a questing a talent, talent or a questing ability from other games. And the, again, you can't pick a new one in the middle of the game. And it's going to be the same. This is one of the questions I had. It'll be the same for Asheron as it is for Talos. These aren't based on their specific abilities. And something interesting they did say is that the rest of your team can help you complete this. So again, counter build potential. If your knight has a specific ability that shuts down an enemy comp, your whole team can work together to make sure they have that ability sooner in the game rather than later. We'll move on down here to the marksman class. For the Marksman, uh, of course, we have Dante and Malware. I already discussed that. The class ability is Sharpshooting. Marksman can select one enemy myth to target for increased damage. Eh, I, don't I don't really like this one. This one seems a little blah compared to the other ones. Um, it will be a nice thing to do as an ADC. It just seems a little boring to me. Um, if you guys can think of a better class ability, maybe we can all get behind that, that, that idea and, and push it because... I personally don't really like this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I think we covered all of the classes here. Yep, looks like we did. So let's head on to the universe. So Ethereal put a ton of work into world building and creating an entire universe with different realms. And if you look through the, the lore, it explains why you have a sentient computer virus fighting a mermaid <laughs> and a witch doctor. You know what I mean? So even amongst the even among amongst even amongst these different realms, like if we take a look at Zuria here, if we look at Zuria here, there's even different districts in these realms with different levels of technology you got leia the jungle queen and chief akaika who's kind of a witch doctor but then you also have dante from zuria who is of course looks very technologically advanced and uses dual pistols for his or transmuters as they call them for his um for his weapons but if, if you click on these guys you can see that you get a little short story about them and then you, you click on these regions you also get a little short story and then we scroll down here and we see that there's even more little stories. A lot of lore here. Um, you can spend all day reading through all of this lore. And then you can select on the different regions down here at the bottom if, if that's something you're into. Let's go back to the universe here. So 
that's about it as far as the information. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming out of Ethereal. They didn't. One thing they didn't cover that I was hoping they would cover is the new map. You've seen the old map trailer. You've seen it a lot in my videos. I use it a lot because it's you know interesting to look out in the background while I'm blathering on about something or other. But I kind of feel bad about it because I know that they are creating a new map and the old map is kind of out of date at this point. I was hoping that we would see some information on this new map on the website. We didn't get that information. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll go and see how many buttholes I have to lick over at Undying to get a, a sneak preview of that map. Ho so hopefully I could do that in the future and show you guys what the newest map looks like. That would be absolutely amazing. But that's going to be it for our little tour of the website. If you like the video, uh, uh, fucking uh, shit. Okay, I was about to do the, I was about to do the YouTuber thing there and tell everybody to to like and subscribe and all that shit, but my 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 soul rebelled against it. I can't do that. I uh, I don't knock on other YouTubers that do that. Like if that's a great way to grow your channel is to remind people to subscribe and like. But the way I look at it is that people know how to use YouTube. If you like the video, you're gonna like it, you know. And uh, I just, every time I hear like, make sure you'll ding that bell for notification. That, that's what it sounds like to me when people say that shit. It just sounds like they're deep throat in their mic. I just, I've done it on a handful of videos and it always feels dirty and I just don't like doing it. So I'm not, that was a weird tangent to get off on on the, at the end of this video. I should probably edit that out. But anyway, this is the old Mangoo signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoo.